is a school of thought that says the Queen Elizabeth class carriers are an oversized vanity project and there are regular complaints that RN should have built smaller ships. In this long read we analyze the context of their development in the case for and against the procurement of large aircraft carriers, the QEC are the largest ships ever built for the RN, officially their empty displacement is 65,000 tons, although some of the trained I suggested may be in excess of this figure. Carrying a full load of fuel, aircraft, weapons and people will add a further 10,000 tons to these impressive vessels. From a communications perspective, their size has been a mixed blessing. Official publications have tended to highlight their scale, the engineering achievement and even their contribution to increased overall tonnage of the fleet, ahead of their actual utility. But building big has also attracted an army of critics, many advising us we should have gone for a smaller, invincible plus concept or given up on carriers entirely. Even more misguided is the idea that we could have saved pound billions by investing in smaller and or more numerous platforms, when in fact the QEC are arguably the best value for money aircraft carriers in the world meet the critics Nick Whitney, a former MOD director of international security policy says the carriers ended up being so large because the Royal Navy wanted them to be as big as possible so it would be taken seriously by the US Navy, they were nicknamed Topsy within the MOD, after. A character in the novel Uncle Tom's Cabin who kept on growing in size, Max Hastings is an experienced journalist but characterizes the shallow analysis and amateurish ideas about carriers that is widespread, commenting how much smarter it would have been to build a couple of cheap and cheerful naval platforms from which to launch drones and low-tech aircraft. For that, one could almost have welded steel plates on top of tanker hulls to create acceptable flight decks. Bernard Gray is one of the more credible voices, being employed as a SPAD to George Robertson and Jeff Huon, helping direct the 1998 Defense Review and later becoming Chief of Defense Material at the MOD, 2010-15. He says the real reason that the size was doubled to 65,000 tons was to make room for boilers or ammos for cat-slash-trap operations, an adaptation that made no sense. We never had the money for the four to five squadrons of F-35 that the new carriers could accommodate. We order two 35,000-ton carriers. Then the Navy insanely decides to almost double the size to 65,000 tons. Shaping the design to understand whether the Navy really did go insane it is necessary to look back at the personalities, the design process and the decision-making in Whitehall during the early 21st century.